Hoi, RC here. I'm going to give you a little tutorial on how I do my spray painting. Um, first off, I made myself a box. This is just a standard uh, moving box. I cut the top off so that I could get my arms in there and get, get some light and see what I'm doing. And I left the sides and then I cut the flaps off the front. And the whole purpose for this is, as I'm sure you can see, I just sprayed something in black and you get overspray on everything, right? This way you can keep all the overspray in one spot. It's not a big mess. And life isn't as horrible. <clears throat> the second thing I like to do is I use painting tape. I don't use the cheap Dollarama or whatever dollar store um, masking tape. I use painting tape. I put it in a loop, I tape it down, and I put my guys on top. That way I can scoop up the whole cord card and walk this inside when it's wet. You know what I mean? I can carry two of them at a time. Put them off somewhere with a fan blowing. And I usually put them in the bathroom with the fan blowing and uh, open a window and that way I don't sneak up the house and have an angry wife. All right, so I'm just gonna give you a quick tutorial on spray painting. Doesn't really matter what brand you do, but make sure you buy one that will stick to plastic. I'm currently using a Krylon uh, flat white primer. And the key to this is light coats and multiple light coats. And always start before, see, always start before and finish after. So, really light coats. You can turn it around and difficult to do with a camera stand in the way. And always start spraying before and finish after your product. And let's go this way. There we go. That's one set sprayed up. I'm gonna set them on top. I'm gonna throw this batch in there. And as always, follow the directions on the can. They'll give you specifications on whether you need to uh, wear a respirator or you can just do it in a ventilated area, as this one says. And I'm done, so clean the tip, or next time you won't be able to use it. And that, as you can see, I didn't get inside those pieces as well. But uh, these guys are more or less done. And I try to aim at the openings. And just to make sure, I'm always going to, uh, when this is dry, I'm going to do another coat. And then um, so when that's dry, I'll do another coat. But uh, for now, that's what she looks like. It's that hard. And uh, yeah, that's spray paint. Light coats, and I'll come back and I'll coat it again. And then I'll come back and I'll coat it again. Maybe two or three times, and I'll get the same finish that a professional gets using multiple light coats, kind of like an airbrush. Uh, if you do one really thick, heavy coat, you're gonna fill in all the details, right? Everything's gonna disappear, but as, as you can see, you can still see all the details on these vehicles. Right down to the treads on the side, right? You don't wanna fill that all in. And the reason I'm doing these units this way is uh, I bought a pile of uh, historical board gaming's uh, miscolor units. So I'm just spray painting these guys all up because I bought them for real cheap. And then I'm gonna spray them in a pumpkin orange to match the Japanese property. All right, and these guys are actually the dudes standing up there. They're actually from uh, 
from uh, the American game there, the SNLF, I believe. SM. SM. I can't remember. Off the top of my head, I just I got myself in a word game. Anyway, I'm going to leave you there, and I'll come back and spray paint the next coat, and uh, you'll be able to see a marked difference. Okay, it's been a few minutes. Been like 10 minutes or so. so. My paint is now dry enough to touch. And since I did a really light coat, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to try to really get the angles in there properly. So... I don't know how much of this you can see, but I'm trying to get a nice even coat on everything. Now it's primed. It's not perfectly primed. There's a few spots in there that aren't done so well in the, the, uh, the little cabins, but uh, that's good enough to stick paint to. I don't need, I can do it another coat and make it perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. And <clears throat> if you happen to have cats, you're going to have the same problem I have right now, oh, man, right here. Where I've got a hair on there. So I'd rather wreck my prime job to get the hair off. Yeah. No, I'll get that guy in a bit. And now, layer number two. These are some light cruisers, some battle cruisers, and some advanced subs for the Japanese. There you go. There's a cloud of white overspray coming over there, but so as you can see, uh, a lot of that black has been covered up by white, and that's why I like doing some some of that. Uh, I like having this box because it collects most of my overspray, and I'm shooting into the box so that it blows to the back and hopefully sticks to the walls and sides. All right, and there you have it. I'm gonna leave you there. Okay, so I have here some miscolored stuff that I sprayed black for the Japanese, or for the Germans. These are actually dark gray tank destroyers and self-propelled artillery. These guys are the gray guys from uh, the America game, the Panzer, Grenade, Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, these are actually, I can't remember if they're Russian or Japanese. No, these are the Russian uh sculpts for the uh miss miss color again so they were dirt cheap so i bought a pile of them now i finally have air transports and i had another game here so i, I sprayed a couple of uh battleships a pile of cruisers from the out of box game and then here's some japanese light cruisers i'm spraying those as well and then the, here's some of the same japanese uh uh i-400s i think they are but i could be wrong they're just um uh, gonna be my advanced submarines for the Jap for the Germans. So I'm probably gonna pick up another package of those. I think I got enough light cruisers to do everybody and whatnot. So as you can see, these guys have been painted about two hours ago. So it's still gray on the bottom, right? So I'm gonna leave these guys for 24 hours on this card 
cardboard tab here just in case there's some paint uh, transfer. It's unlikely they're dry to touch, but uh, they're not dry and cured for at least 24 hours. So tomorrow I'll do the same thing with tape and I'll spray the bottoms of all these things. That way if there's any details like on the tail of the plane or whatever, or some of the tracks on these things might not have got shot properly in the front and the back. Yeah, you can kind of tell. It kind of got some overspray in there, but not very well. So we'll just flip them upside down and give them a good, sh good shot. And uh, then they'll be done. Right? Like uh, Japanese off-colored brown, right? Oh, they're a little sticky. Uh-huh. So there you go. That's, that's how complicated it is. I did all these guys in about the same amount of time as I did the uh, other stuff outside. Again, follow the directions on the can. These guys are going to cure for 24 hours. Then I'm going to flip them over. I'm going to do the bottom. Uh, best recommendation for some kind of some of these paints, especially if it's going to be on plastic and you're going to be moving it around, let it cure for close to a week, and the paint gets really hard. It takes a while for the paint to harden. But uh, for example, if you paint this shelf, and then within a day you put a glass on it, when you lift it up, you're going to take a ring off. Of paint from where the glass was sitting right but if you let it harden for a week that won't happen anymore same thing happens with these pieces that's oftentimes the most common reason why my cheap pieces are chipping because I'm in a big hurry to get them on the board so a little bit extra time we'll do that and I'm gonna have to possibly redo my color scheme for marking the tips of my my ships and planes like these transports are going to go white on the tips, but I'm not sure what color to use for the light cruisers. And I want to find a color for advanced tech, like these uh, heavy battle, uh, heavy uh, sub advanced submarine sculpts. So we'll take a look at that. And then uh, these guys, I'm thinking I might do uh, something crazy, like give them, like what I did with my commanders, where I paint the base a color and maybe the helmets the same color, turn them into either marines or who knows what. Although I think these guys are going to be my uh, the lead of the right SS troops. That'll be a lot easier to do them that way. They're very different from the rest of the uh, Germans in the game. All right. And yeah, so it's two hours. So there's, they're dry enough to touch. But check your paint can. And I'm using a gloss. Because unlike other people where they're putting on all these fancy dry brushes and matte color, matte finishes and whatever... When you paint, all the hardening agents in the clear coat are in the gloss itself, right? So the glossier it is, the harder the finish, right? The shinier it is, the harder the finish. And I want to have a nice, solid, hard finish so I don't have to redo these guys again. And I'm just going for color scheme. I'm not doing any of this crazy dry brushing and show and wear and giving the guy a face and stuff like that. So... It works for me. If I was going to do all that stuff, yeah, I'd probably go with a matte. Otherwise, you'd be super, super shiny. you kind of look off. All right. So there you go. I'm working more on playability and durability rather than uh, aesthetic view. But uh, everybody's got a different way of doing it, and none of them are wrong. It's just I got... That's my reason as to why I'm using a gloss finish. And uh, for the paint here, it doesn't really matter what finish you use. I'm putting a, a clear clear coat gloss on top. So, you know, as you see, they're going to be nice and shiny. But they'll be nice and hard, so they'll last me three or four years of playing with them before the paint starts chipping off, I hope. Even longer would be better. Anyway, I'm going to leave you there. Enjoy. Mm, bye. Sorry about the shaky camera, but I don't want to be moving this stuff around too much. Oh, of course. Anyway, <sighs> gotta get off there now. So here are some examples of the miscolored uh, 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 units I've ordered here. So this is why I really like them. You've got the uh, Russian tank destroyers. I was two bucks for I think ten or twenty of them. I can't remember. Really nice scope. It's kind of hard to see here. Got an open canopy there. But, uh, yeah, with a nice sculpt, just like all the other ones, tracks go all the way around, whatnot. 
I got the transports and I'm not sure if you can tell the color very clearly on this camera at the moment but um, it's quite a bit darker yeah, let's put the, uh, the plane on top so yeah you can kind of see the color there how it's quite a bit darker so it's a little bit darker but I mean if you don't really care it's not too bad and if you're this kind of guy who's gonna paint your own stuff like I do it'll be all good uh, the color difference is not as drastic with some of these uh, this is the original or the proper color light tank in the gray there's a tank destroyer stug three very nice little sculpt it's got the skirts on the side right and then you got the uh, motorized artillery the Hummel another nice sculpt I really like their sculpts they were very well made um, these ones aren't as dark some of them are much darker it depends on the plastic it's it's almost like they had a dye change in the mold and some of them are darker and some of them are lighter but they're not all not they're all not matching this color which they should some of them are a little bit more charcoal almost black all right and then here for the Japanese you can really tell my out of box color is is quite light so I have I don't have an example of everything here because I just primed everything but yeah you can see the tank destroyers there it's a little bit off color the uh, the thinner uh, transport plane here you can't really tell on the wings since they're so thin you can kind of almost you get that semi translucent appearance but the uh, fuselage is a lot darker right uh, obviously that wouldn't land on a carrier but that's just for color comparison and then I got the, the two Yamamoto's so this is the out-of-box Yamamoto and then this is the one that you order when you ordered from the set and it's quite clearly a different size it still looks okay on the board there's nothing wrong with that but it's very much larger and then I got the three cruiser types here I got the light cruiser the out-of-box cruiser and then you have the heavy cruiser and there's quite an obvious difference in the sculpt shape there each one gets progressively thicker in width and uh, slightly in in length they're more or less the same but um, these two sculpts are much more detailed than the out of box and um, yeah it, when I get a nice paint job on there it'll be easier to see I mean I got a whole pile of lights cranked on and you can't even tell but uh, yeah I'm in a bad spot all right um, and then these subs here this is the out of box sub and then the one in the back there that's the uh, I believe it's the i400 I could be wrong that's the uh, the uh, Japanese larger sub I'm using that I'm gonna order a bunch more here and I'm just gonna paint them up for everybody super subs obvious right it's quite uh, obviously different the German sub the American subs are all the same length as this lighter out of box Japanese sub so it'll work perfectly for my uh, global 36 game and possibly for any house rules you happen to have so that's about all I got so um, yeah I highly recommend if you get a chance order some of these things up like I picked up some of these Katayushkas I think I got 10 or 15 of them I can't remember maybe even 20 for like two bucks nice little rocket truck very good detail you get the wheels the cab the rockets on the side I really like these things there we go stinking shadows sorry I got too much track lighting in my house it's all point the table for the game is situated in a certain spot where it'll work out for that but it's more difficult to show on here all right so um these are just a couple of examples I'm definitely gonna have to order some more of this stuff as you can see I ordered a boat ton of these uh, transport planes for the Russians they're never gonna need this many but I can paint them up to be other people I already got the Germans and the Japanese painted and I got a pile of these Japanese transports for two bucks or so maybe I spent a little bit more I might have got two sets but e either way I got enough here that I can do all the nations in the game they all have basically two different scopes and once you paint them and put the wing identifiers that I put on there my transports are white so I'm just gonna put little white tips on the wings that's it we're done all right so there's some uh, things to see about uh, these maybe checking out the uh, 
off-colored stuff if you're into painting and I just gave you a quick tutorial on the easiest simplest way to paint less paint more coats and you will have a very hard time screwing it up and the second one is start spraying before you reach your product and finish spraying after you finish on your product so don't start and stop the spray on the product you will get extra paint on something or not enough paint on something and that can turn into runs and loss of detail and all sorts of other nastiness so i don't recommend doing that and yeah like i said less coats or more coats less paint and uh yeah that's it's that's stupid simple and then when you're done get a clear coat um the finish you want anywhere from matte to high gloss and uh, the higher the gloss the harder the finish but the matte will show the color details a little bit clearer and won't make the pieces shiny on your board so that's a matter of personal preference anyhow i'm going to leave it there and uh yeah that's my basic tutorial on spray painting and how i do it uh i'm not like the ultimate pro i guess i don't know like when it comes to spray painting models, I'm not very experienced, but when it comes to uh, spraying houses, I'm, yeah, I don't know, I only spent five years commercially painting houses for a living with a spray gun, so kind of know what I'm talking about. So, fine tip if you can get that, if not, light coats, multiple coats. And there you go. All right, and I'll leave you there. Enjoy. Uh, RC saying it's easy to paint, anybody can do it. Get into it, find something, just make sure the paint's good for plastic. And even if that's not good for plastic, make sure your primer is good for plastic. And then your paint will adhere to the primer. All right. Anyway, there you go. Bye.